So last night, we were going to be streaming Spelljammer, Adventures in Space, uh, a campaign of, of it, or a mini campaign called uh, Gutter Stars. I had players lined up, I had uh, the adventure, or the, the starting kind of frame to the campaign st kind of sorted out. Um, and then we were, went to stream and everything imploded uh, like a uh, star. Uh, we, uh, the players were all fine. I think it was, was my end. What happened, I think, was that OBS and Roll20 um, and a few other th bits and pieces like that were probably too much for my processors. It's a bit strange. I've never seen anything like it. I'd done test streams. They'd worked fine, including of using OBS to capture Roll20 with people on it. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, investigations are continuing, we'll say. So we did not have live Spelljammer last night. But what happened after many failed attempts to get things going uh, was that I used Bandicam to to screen cap our play. And that seemed to, uh, to be working fine. Uh, except that after a time, that too started dropping. So I had to bring it back up as an it crash. I, Bandicam, I don't think has ever crashed in my use of it. Um, and I had, you know, made sure nothing else was going on in the background or virtually nothing, just a couple of word files and uh, um, a couple of tabs and that was it. And nonetheless, too much, too much for my computer. Um, and so I managed to uh, capture most of the game that we played uh, for about an hour and 10 minutes. So we lost about 50 minutes of our planned play time but with some kind of bits and pieces some problems along the way and I have spliced that together uh, and I've, I've done a few other bits of production editing to uh, to get it into a viewable format for you. Now it's not as visually appealing as I would have hoped because basically I, I wasn't trying to do very much from Roll20 and um, I didn't oh, I, and, and I didn't want to kind of mess around too much and risk more crashes given I wasn't sure what was causing them so it's pretty static there's a few bits there's some different maps and things like that I also couldn't play or I didn't play live music at the time because viral 20 uh, because basically I, again I was concerned about uh, crash issues so instead I added a backing track to it and um, the format I recorded it in I via, via bandicam meant that I was capturing my sound on my microphone and the player's sound I captured via desktop audio. And that works fine, but it means our levels are a bit different and it's very hard to equalize because there's no raw sound data to play with. But I've done my best with that. Now, to incentivize you uh, enjoying yourself more, I, I should say the players are great. I really enjoyed my time with them. Um, and I think all due credit goes to them for being patient and them for throwing themselves in with gusto and playing a good game. Uh, but to to incentivize you're enjoying more what is kind of like listening at points probably like to a Discord game of D&D &D where the DM's uh, mic keeps dropping or whatever something like that is I'm gonna have a contest uh, It's gonna be a Wheel of Fortune kind of contest the winner I'll spin for a winner and that person will get to design an NPC to be in the world um, of the campaign but uh, There are two ways to gain entries uh, based on your comments. The first is an easy one. Everyone can get one of these fairly easily, I think. It's just to say what you, what character line or moment you enjoyed most in the session. And the second way is to uh, spot and politely point out one blooper. It has to be a blooper no one else has identified. So it can be a transition. It can be a bit where the screen goes wobbly or funny. Um, it can be a sound. Okay, welcome to Spelljammer Gutter Stars for the approximately fifth or sixth attempt. Uh, you've got to give credit to these patient players. Uh, we call it Gutter Stars because all the equipment involved was found in a gutter. And uh, that's uh, explanatory of a, a lot of things. We'll try to work out the tech issues by next time though. Uh, Yet yeah, this is, as I said, Spelljammer Gutter Stars. These are me and the four players you can see on screen now. We're doing audio via Discord and video where we have it via Roll20. Roll20 can, will live or die as it pleases. We'll just see what we can do. So, our characters are adventurers. They are second edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons adventurers, uh, but they're in fantasy space. They're in a, uh, a, a, a interstellar universe, uh, which consists of magical, um, substances and is is traveled amongst by orcs and by goblins and uh, by elves and mind flayers and all the other 
uh, classics of Dungeons and Dragons. So you got this genre meld of kind of somewhat Star Warsy sci-fi, quite fantasy sci-fi, but with D and D tropes. And our particular heroes, there, uh, they are adventurers who who love um, the the thrill of working in amongst the stars. Um, they look up and they can see uh, elven men of war with great wings flying through the sky, manned by the Imperial Elven Navy. They can see um, nautiloid mind flayer vessels like this one coming into dock at, at the great asteroid city, the Rock of Braal. And they can uh, see um, dragon ships from Shu Lung uh, looking like a, a great Chinese dragon but with a ship inside docking. Uh, I say they can see that because they don't get to travel amongst the stars. Uh, they are groundsiders. They're stuck on the ground. They're too weak and puny for many jobs. Um, some, some of them were recently recruited to go and explore an ice asteroid and just about got back intact. Uh, but that's the most that could be said for them. Uh, but yes, uh, they are nonetheless dreamers. They are in the gutter looking up at the stars. Now, what we'll do now is we will introduce our characters and um, I'll, I'll, I'll call on you to go. Here, here we are on the Rock of Graal. This is where the, the players live. Let's just uh, get... Yeah, that's... They, they live near the docks. You can see there the little... Um, player token this asteroid and uh, yes um, they work together in a little uh, well they, they live together in a, in a little room um, they've got a second room we'll get to that in a moment but they live together in a little room and they take whatever jobs they can right now it's actually pretty good work for uh, characters like these I'll explain why in a second they've got some opportunities coming up uh, Phil could you introduce your character please Yes, hi, my name is Phil, and I'm going to be playing 5PR-X. Uh, they are an auto norm and they go by the name of Sparks. Um, they were created for a war that never took place and managed to avoid and escape the dismantling process, and they... hid themselves away on a transport ship and managed to get from my in peace, which is where they were made, to the Rock of Brawl. The... So, Phil, you're telling me about the downsides of having a, an autonome as an adventurer, weren't you? Uh, yes, yeah, so the downsides of having an autonome for an adventurer, which again, it's not a classic um, character race, it's more of a um, amended monster stat, is that... He is very focused and single-minded here. Some of his programming will automatically kick in whether he wants it to or not. So if, as example is, he is sent to find a rock sample and on his travels meets a person named Rock, he will need to take a sample from him. Um, <laughs> other things that are a bit of a downside to him is that he... Um, he has to, he, it is programmed to follow orders if he's given order by um, someone kind of further in command or what he perceives to be further higher in, higher in the chain of command the Earth himself that he will follow the orders as long as it doesn't conflict with um, his kind of core programming which effectively is, is protect any norm yeah. and protect any children even if they are a baby beholder. Yeah, his first that may be an issue, but hopefully he might come... Uh, How many yes. baby beholders do you expect us to meet? That's the real question. <laughs> uh, at, at this point, it's got to be... <laughs> oh, well, I... Campaign, hasn't it? Okay. Um, yeah, there's got to be at least one. Yeah. Alex, what about your character? Uh, I am Alex, and I am playing uh, Guild Timorin. Uh, he is a, a human from the world of Spiral. Uh, not not so far away, it's in the same crystal sphere as the Rock of Brawl. Um, or at least, you know, it kind of was. It's not so much, it's not doing so well anymore after the um, 
the recent, uh, was it the Unhuman War, it was called? Yeah, well, the ongoing Unhuman War, where the scroll, On ongoing. The scroll in there, the, it's kind of in a ceasefire in this crystal sphere, but yeah, the, the scroll and their goblinoid allies came and came from the edges of space, returned and uh, went to war with the elves and various other allies of theirs. Uh, so yeah, what, what what happened to Spiral in that? Um, I don't remember the exact details. It was not good. It didn't quite blow up, did it? Uh, no, it didn't blow up. It was taken over by the Scroll, wasn't it? In, it's, yeah. yeah, just 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 normal invasion. Yeah, um, not on the big, not and the obviously worst things that can happen. Just a bad thing. No, just 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 in the top five. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and so uh. Gil found, managed to find himself on a, an uh, Elven Imperial Navy oh. ship, mm -hmm. um, managed to get off world, um, kind of served on there for a, a few months, kind of got the hang of, you know, surviving in space, uh, whilst he kind of paid off his debt, uh, was kind of discharged on the, the Rock of Brawl and has been uh, kind of surviving since then the best he can. He's, um, he's a wizard, um, a f fairly... Um, a, a militant wizard. He's a he's a, an invoker for his magic, and he's also capable of, of fighting with a, a sword, a fairly fairly big sword as well. Um, yeah. Uh, so you can see here, I've just uh, selected Keg, and then that is Gil. At least our current image for Gil. Uh, okay, Ma Major Major Remington Smythe, could you introduce yourself? Uh, hi. Uh, I'm Andrew, and tonight I will be portraying the role of Major Alphonse Remington Smythe. Uh, the Major is a GIF, or JIF, if that's how you prefer to pronounce it, Jife, which is a kind of <laughs> JIF, then. He, um, which in any, however you pronounce it, he is an eight-foot-tall hippo man from a distinguished military background. He's very fond of telling people that he served in the 247th Space Born Marines. What he doesn't tend to tell people is that he actually serves in the clerical division of said marines as a, qu as a quartermaster and never saw any frontline combat whatsoever. Um, as an adventurer, he is pretty strong and tough, as you can imagine, for an 8 foot tall hippo man. He is of the warrior class, and he also has the ability to headbutt things with his giant hippo head, which can cause them basically more damage than any of the weapons he has at the moment. Yeah, so even though he wasn't, he, uh, was a, he, was, yeah. he was a quartermaster, he was still a pretty powerful uh, warrior in his own right. It, but just by the standards of GIF, he's not particularly um, experienced or mighty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yes. and finally, um, Flynn Manley. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Brian, and tonight I'll be Flynn Manley, which is the third son of a noble family uh, off to make his own name after he's been cut off uh the, too many embarrassing shenanigans uh for for his father's taste uh so he got you know traditional yeah. schooling and literature sword fighting and whatnot and he thinks of himself as a pretty cultured dashing hero but he has uh you know basically no experience with anything yeah uh, uh, but he, very high on, high on confidence though he's very handsome as well isn't he yeah, high charisma, uh, you know, a, ge a gentleman yeah. dueler. What a Yikes. Man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I, and I wield a rapier just like that, so. Yeah. It's perfect. So, like I say, you know, your, your um, luck is looking up. Uh, I say that because um, there is a plague afoot on the Rock of Brawl, on this great asteroid in space. Um, the Imperial Navy base and the fields are on the on the bottom side and the cities on the up, the top side, uh, but a horrible disease, well, a kind of horrible disease, has struck the rock. They call it Malingerer's cholera. Uh, it has the symptoms of cholera, and I will allow uh, people to Google that in their own time. Uh, but it's it's incredibly mild. It, it it's very unpleasant, but it just kind of knocks people out. It means people uh, are stopped from working for weeks at a time. And um, this has meant that there is a labour shortage. Um, now, for the really good jobs, for the exciting stuff where you go and fight uh, pirates and storm mind flayer bases, uh, they don't want you guys. You're still small fry for them. They can find enough uh, tough, particularly paladins, who are, of course, immune to such things. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, this has created some opportunities for you. It, there's also a chance of getting the Malingora's Cholera. Uh, some of your, your other co-adventurers are down with it, and some others did pick up a job which was apparently, the, you know, clearing up a big mess. They thought it'd be an exciting job, and it turns out it is literally uh, clearing up a big mess. Um, oh. the, one of the local GIF mercenary companies has had a bad case of Malingora's Cholera. But there are some opportunities for um, particularly driven and sharp young adventurers such as yourself. And you've, you've heard of a few different jobs, um, and I'll, I'll describe them to you. And then as a party, this is you know de being delivered to you in your uh, in your in quarters where you live with. Oh, what's this here, Phil? Can you see on screen? Can you see what I've uh, got selected? <laughs> Ah, yes, that would be the giant space hamster. Uh, you did have two rooms, um, but uh, what, well, before before we talk about your next jobs, do, do you want to sum up, especially because Flynn um, was uh, indisposed at the time of your uh, your job to, or to go to an ice asteroid on behalf of House Morn, uh, could you tell Flynn what happened last time? Uh, yes, so we were tasked with um, exploring, clearing out a um, ice asteroid. There was uh, it was an abandoned as a uh, as a, a, a wee hamster, um, and, and then it had been left to kind of fend for itself. It, it did grow considerably to the point where you had to move it by greasing the hamster and sliding around the icy room. Um, but I couldn't possibly uh, leave the creature. <laughs> Who wasn't? Specifically, Who he wasn't? couldn't. Yeah. The rest yeah. of us tried to, but he would not leave without it. Nope. I mean, um, so... we weren't able to convince him to stop by the end, as we'd both been knocked unconscious. Yeah, literally what happened was when, to... when Sparks was like, let's go back and uh, check on this hamster, um, they met the final hostile inhabitant of this uh, thing, which were uh, kind of starfish men, weren't they? Um, and mm -hmm. uh, after defeating it, you turned around at Sparks and saw that both your companions had been knocked out and the gnome surveyor was just looking at them with uh, disgust. So you went and uh, woke up the hamster and the hamster chewed its way out. And now Flynn, as you can see, uh, your bedroom, um, where, you, where you and some of the uh, crew uh, sleep, has been taken over by a giant space hamster. How do you feel about that, Flynn? Pretty terrible because now we're sharing one room and one of us is a, a hippo and <laughs> that that won't do uh, yeah F flynn is looking to get some cash i imagine to get some bigger quarters <laughs> so yeah we've got these these uh these jobs that you've uh, you've heard tell of uh, these are all these are some jobs that have to be fairly competitive normally uh but you think you can get one the first job is there is a need for delivery men um, to deliver uh, some uh, items from an armourer uh, to a GIF regiment, not your regiment, Major, but to a different GIF adventuring group that is based on the Rock of Raal. That is worth... Uh, let's just check how much that uh, is. Um, worth, that is uh, worth 30, uh, five gold pieces each. Five gold pieces each for a delivery job from the armourer to the GIF regiment. There is a publisher looking, offering ten gold for a letter delivery to someone in the middle city. A publisher in the middle city is looking for someone to, for ten gold to take uh, a letter to someone. That's a suspiciously high amount. There's need for peer guards at the docks in the Rock of Graal. We'll just uh, head back to the Rock of Graal. And uh, that the guard duty is five gold night for two nights um, and they will take as many guards as are available. And there is longshore work which is ten gold ahead for a week's work. Um, so those jobs again. Delivery. Delivering armour. Uh, to Agamor, to um, the Agamor company. Taking a message for a suspiciously high amount of money to someone in the middle city. Guard duty on the piers over here, near where you're based. Um, and longshore work also at the piers. 
So this, this, this letter, is that 10 gold <laughs> total or 10 gold a person? Uh, 10 gold total. Mm -hmm. but, but what could that take? Uh, a, a couple hours? We'll yeah. Done. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to do that, you may as well take the other carrier job as well and just do them in one run. Well, wh yeah, wh yeah. Where, is, where is this Agamore company? Uh, the Agamore company is... Let me just uh, check... Uh, it's up in Gift Town, which uh, you, you'll be familiar with, uh, with Major. It is just north of your current position, around here. Like, oh, I can't have it. Like, oh, right there we are. Yeah. yeah oh, that's, that, that's me. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then the middle city is like this area. Yeah, that's the middle presumably city. in the middle. Yep, yeah, to the west of the. Uh, the do you see this wall line there, running along there? That's the upper city with the noble estates. The nicest suburb yeah, yeah. On, on the bottom of that, that map. The middle city is around this big um, big market, and the lower city is where you are. Near, near the, docks. the docks, yeah. So yeah, you've got a lower city delivery job from an armourer here. You've got a middle city job, and uh, there is a couple of jobs at the docks. I mean... None of us really want to do, like, a real job, do we? We don't want to, you know, work days in a row. I don't want to be a longshoreman. That's, that's no. tough work. No. Yeah. And day guards, it's five GP, but that's, like, two nights of work. Yeah. Nights, eight where nights we, night. Yeah, where we just deliver items and get five for, like, what, a couple of hours. Yeah. And it's gift regiment. I mean, Major, I'm sure you may have... Uh, could have potentially at least heard of this company, or it almost certainly okay. heard of. Respectable fellows. What's the idea, boy? They gif. I, I, I must. I, I don't have much experience with gif. I, I, I don't know. I, I just seem very good gif and bad gif. No. They're a respectable gif, and no, they're a respectable gif. <laughs> I, I, I see. Respectable and very respectable. Those are the yes. Well, it sounds like we can just go for a nice stroll through the city. Yeah, and yeah. earn a lot of money. A, a, a so. nice, easy job, and nothing will go wrong. Exactly. Well, something has to keep us in hamster food. Now, how, how much are the rooms? Because uh, I think I know what I'm spending my share on. <laughs> oh, how much are rooms? Well, I'm. I'll check for you, uh, Flynn, in the Close Handbook, uh, which is here. This is our second edition Close Handbook. So Enough daily, that this job could pay for some. So daily food uh, per uh, per week per month for common daily food and lodgings is twenty uh, per person. For poor food and lodgings is six silver. Uh, so. It's about 40 or 30 something times the cost to go to a decent room for room and board. But it does have the upside of not having any hamsters in it. <laughs> Wait, so are we in poor right now? Yep, you're in, a, in fairly poor in your, in your rooms. Okay. But it's six silver a month uh, for each of you, so it's not that. It's not expensive, you can afford it. Yeah. yeah. Would I be able to try and get some kind of discount? Being that I wouldn't actually eat. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I would just need a little bit of a your, your closet. Kind of, probably people pretend you're an ornament. <laughs> yeah. You we just the keep door. you in the cupboard when the landlord comes around. <laughs> put, put a lampshade on Yeah, we head. hang our hats on you. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't hear that. Sparks, sparks <laughs> obey. You know, Sparks is uh, like, oh, this is how I can serve my masters, I see. <laughs> hmm. uh, so, yeah. Anything to help them in? Uh, yeah, who, what, what, uh, so so we've got some packages second. and a letter. Yeah, there's. Uh, I think there are two. Well, it's two handcart. It's a handcart with a couple of locked chests would be the job uh, to be guarded through town because they are fairly valuable, as you can imagine. Where where are they being taken from? Uh, they are uh, being taken from um, the kind of southern end of the lower city. Oh, like this, this kind of. Yeah. This... Yeah, that kind of area. Right. Yeah. Perhaps the letter first? Like, that seems fairly easy, yeah. like... Um, yeah, it's, like, uh, is, is this up here? Yeah. Yeah. 
and it was going to there. Like it's going, it's going like, uh, like, oh, like that. It's, oh my goodness, my mouse is having a fun time of it. Something like that is would be there. Yeah. Very. Oh, cool. I've just. And then the other ones somewhere around here. Yeah. And we don't know where we don't know where the letter's going, but um, that it, can't be too hard. No, no, it's a. Uh, there is a yeah, it's a house just north of the Elven Forest. You see the forest in the middle city there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a house. That's up. fairly easy. So yeah, might as well do that and then yeah. walk, walk back. We can go out, do the one further away, and then come back and do the one closer to home. Yeah. Um, Reveal. You're not, not interested in the uh, guard duty and the longshore work, then? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I mean, Flynn has made his view clear of the longshore work, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so uh, you're going to have to travel, uh, I guess, for this. So let's look at, we'll move you see, down to where you need to go. Um, then you, you arrive at uh, the armourer, um, who is... Uh, uh... Yeah. Thought we wanted to do the, the oh, letter so first, I think. First. The letter first, yep, yeah, that's fine. You'll head over. Yes, I... uh, yeah, you, you head over to just near the Great Bazaar, the Great Market. Uh, there. Uh, you are at, uh, uh, yeah, Clipper Street, just to the uh, south of it, in fact. And you arrive at the publisher. Uh, the publisher uh, is a. Um, an elf uh, doesn't live in the elven forest, uh, which isn't completely unusual, but uh, doesn't live in the elven forest. Uh, he is, uh, yeah, uh, called Fandar. And Fandar uh, has a printing press above an office, um, and the office actually also serves as a shop front, and there are, as you step in, a lot of uh, books about exploring the stars, about common uh, plants and stuff, but they're all really nicely printed. They are like slightly, they're, they're, they are a step above 19th century cheap hardback. You know, they are, they've got nice um, hard, kind of proper card plates or hard paper plates. Um, they've got gilt edges. Uh, quite a nice publisher. Uh, there is a, a, a serving um, young man, I suppose, a halfling who is standing on a stool behind the, the, the desk uh, who greets you as you come in um, and uh, will look probably uh, confusedly at these four, um, well, three adventurers and uh, a, an autonome. I should say autonomes don't enjoy the best reputation, not because of the fact they're horrible, but because they go around with tinker gnomes who are constantly getting themselves into uh, increasingly dangerous situations. So there is a worry that autonomes represent oncoming threat. <laughs> uh, so the halfling, the young man, will look at, uh, up at you and say, uh, "Ah, good, good sirs. May I assist you today? What are your, uh, what are your uh, librarial needs? Uh, what would you desire to learn of? Uh, perhaps you would uh, uh, learn of uh, the the scroll invasions and uh, the the weapons in uh, in Maine's encyclopedia of." Uh, of Scrow, or perhaps you would, uh, and he'll kind of trail off looking at you yeah. and realising you're all armed. <laughs> uh, well, dear boy, we were actually looking for the owner, if you would be so kind. Uh, he'll look dubiously, probably again looking at the autonome and at the gif. The other two of you are quite nicely dressed and kind of look, <laughs> <laughs> looks at the gif. And, uh, it, is this for a, a meeting or? A job. A job. Oh, the me the letter. Oh, okay. And he'll kind of look at you and then uh, scurry up the stairs, halfway up, and call up and say, uh, "Master Fandar, uh, there's some um, there's some messengers here. People who want to carry a message for you." And then you'll hear a cultured elven voice go and say, "I'll send them up. Send them up." Um, and the halfling will hop out of the way again. He'll actually probably jump onto a counter to get away from the gif. <laughs> <laughs> so underneath your feet, Major. Um, and uh, say, oh, straight upstairs and turn left. Okay. We head on up, hoping that the staircase will yeah. support us. <laughs> yeah, there's boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah. Support you, Major. I think I think the rest of us should be just fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> heads up and uh, you look into the office. Uh, it's a desk piled high. Uh, with it's got an in tray and an out tray, and there are like daggers through the 
the paperwork in the in tray and the out tray. Uh, it's all very organised, but there's an enormous amount of paperwork. There are lots of uh, books and things. You hear above you, by the way, as the stairs switch back upstairs, you can hear the grinding of machinery upstairs. Uh, there is a relatively, even for an elf, this elf looks relatively old. By that I mean there is a certain sort of silveriness to the hair that is more than just uh, affectation. Um, the eyes are just a little bit recessed. You know, elves live a very long time and don't age for a long time. But this elf looks relatively old. And he'll look at you um, and uh, size you up and say, Ah, uh, you look like the sort of people I'm looking for. Uh, messengers, are you? We can be for the right price. We wear many hats. Uh, he'll he'll say what do, e even the auto gnome and look at the auto gnome. Um, he, even he wears the auto gnome. He wears yeah. the most hats. <laughs> I do love hats. <laughs> You'd be amazed in messages that an auto gnome is capable of conveying. Uh, he, he'll look and say, uh, "Well, uh, desperate times uh, call for desperate uh, employment, I suppose." And he'll say, uh, "Yes, I've got a letter here," and he'll uh, draw out from a, a drawer beneath. The, in the desk, he'll draw out a, a very nice quality envelope that is sealed with a wax seal um, and has a name on it, which you'll see as he puts it on the table is Cavan Luskio. Cavan Luskio. Um, with an address as well. And he says, uh, um, Yes, we've not been able to get our normal errand boys to run this, and I uh, wanted to make sure almost this was special delivery. Got there intact and, uh, and definitely was received. Um, so that I'm offering 10 gold for this to be delivered to Cavan. And why exactly are you contacting mercenaries for this work? Why not try and find another courier or um, the like, dear boy? He'd say, uh, he'll say, <laughs> <laughs> he'll say, dear boy. <laughs> he'll probably pause as you add that and kind of look at you and yeah, mutter to himself uh, in, uh, in Elven. And then he'll say, ah, well, uh, you may have noticed, though us elves are, are somewhat more new than uh, most, there is a bit of a bug going around, and uh, I haven't been able to get our normal couriers. Um, and when you're dealing with your your clients, when you're dealing with uh, your talent, you, you do try to deal with things in the best way possible, get things there on time, and I just really want to make sure that Kevin gets this, receives this. Um, and uh, and the letters delivered. So rather than waiting around till there's another errand boy, I thought I'd put out the real money and get some uh, uh, anyone who'd turn up with. Oh, Kevin is uh, an author. Uh, what does what does he write? Uh, he uh, he'll kind of pause for a moment and say, "Travelogues." Like it's the kind we'd the find Kevin a skill. Uh, he, he'll probably turn to Flynn and say. Ah, you've heard of him, yes. Uh, the Cavern Muscio, a fa famous ranger of the stars. Ah, uh, the kind of books we'd find useful. Yes. Um, he, he would say, ah, oh, well, they, they do enjoy an audience, or, or at least they, they previously have. Uh, I Perhaps you, if you see a copy in a second-hand bookshop, you should pick it up. Uh, but he says, yes, this, this, this letter points at the, at the desk again says this letter is for cavern um, and if you could get it there to him as soon as possible uh, uh, you'll get your 10 gold yes no. i think we can manage that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that's just north of the forest yeah, so it's real close forest, so yeah it's it's a few streets away you know it's uh, a probably a, uh, i think something a couple of miles away, probably. Maybe a mile and a bit. I need to check scale. Yeah. Yeah. Are you expecting much action on route, or...? Uh, well, he'd say, I, I'd hope not. Uh, it's uh, <coughs> Normal errand boys don't get uh, ambushed too often. Sometimes in the lower city. Sometimes. And then he'll look at, uh, at the gif again. <laughs> <laughs> And then kind of look down and uh, put, push the letter towards you, and um, uh, he'll then actually he'll take out uh, a, a a platinum a, a kind of a platinum shiny coin, um, and uh, put up with the letter, uh, and say, look, I'll pay up front if you take it. That works. Mm. 
Yes. It does seem somewhat suspicious, but I think it's Gil probably seems... not as well. I see nothing suspicious about this. I see everything suspicious about this. What what kind of like can Gil, Gil can read Elven? Can he kind of like see what's on the desk? Like what kind of is is it eclectic or is there a uh, kind of topic? It looks like or a, seems a, to be? an office worker's desk. Uh, you can see there's an in, intern and outro. It's mostly in Brilliant. Like what you see written is mostly in Brilliant, oh. and it's just receipts and a bit of admin. You know things like taxation. Uh, requests, things like that. Gil, Gil can't actually read, read or speak Bralian. <laughs> <laughs> just, just common, uh, Elven and no, co co Spiralian. Common is Bralian. In, in oh, is it? Is, okay. Yes. Yeah, so oh, okay. The, the common human language in this crystal sphere is, well, it used to be called, quite, it commonly has been called Spiral Space, um, uh, but now is increasingly called As it should Spiral be. Space due to the unfortunate events lately on Spiral, more and more. Civilized ancestries uh, think of it as Brawl space with the Rock of Brawl being the <laughs> capital of it. Um, yes. Uh, Does it seem as though yeah. uh, Fandar is um, put off by by the Major? Uh, no more than lots of people you meet are put off by the Major. Is it because they're they're considered like uh, they get into scuffles a lot, that yeah, sort of thing? They're, like they're, 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 they're troublemakers. Is the generous way of putting it. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, I, I mean, my, my instinct was that the Major should probably take the letter. Um, yeah. he, he'll, but if we do get in a fight, then the Major will be like the first one people attack. That's true. Major, would you like me to pull the letter in one of my storage compartments? I see no reason why not, if the others are, are amenable. You're not going to leak on it or anything. No, this is one of these sealed. Good, good chat, good chat. Ma ma Major, I'm not sure you can ask uh, uh, the, the, the good fellow if he leaks. That's May his... I remind you of the hamster incident? I, I, I mean... Anyone who carries that much grease about their person... <laughs> Anyhow, you, you you have a point, Major. Was I re-greased before this um, outing? <laughs> you can't say it like that. <laughs> Phil is banned from the stream. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, well, I, I I will let you uh, retcon because you were going shopping. What were you going to buy? Some uh, lard or something, or some grease? Yeah, just some kind of mechanics um, grease, just to replenish my stock. They have had two uses in total, so... Call, call it a, um, uh, two, uh, two gold per, um, kind of little, uh, little squeezy bottle. It's one of them, um, little jerry, the, the little jerry cans with the, yeah. the squeezy thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. With the little... Yeah, this is, this is not lamp oil, this is finer grade stuff, uh, machine. Yeah, but they're kind of the same. Yeah, same principle, yeah. Great. Uh, so Fandar will uh, say, "Ah, so you'll take it then?" And uh, he'll, yeah, he'll kind of push it forward again with the platinum piece. Uh, consider it delivered. Uh, he'll, he'll kind of look um, and, and say, "You do, you look familiar. You know that. What have we met before?" He'll say to Finn. Uh, uh, likely not. Uh, perhaps you know my father, the. The unnamed manly. Uh, he, he'll say, uh, I think, you know, I think I've seen lithographs. I think I've seen cu cuts of his face. Oh, well, how fine to meet you, dear boy. And, uh, and then he'll look at the major. <laughs> I nod sagely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the thick skull of the gif is both good for smashing other things and also for <laughs> uh, not, understand, not understanding he's being cut by someone. Um, yeah. But yeah, you are. Uh, you, Fandar will stand and uh, you know, kind of politely walk toward the door as if uh, ushering you out politely. Yeah. So Company, it's time to go. About face. <laughs> uh, 
Yep, the major does a sharp about face, stamps, and a uh, book pops up from his, uh, Fandar's table and falls on the floor. <laughs> As he, uh, and we march on out of there. As he ducks through the, uh, the slightly too low door, door, doorway um, <laughs> down the stairs, Fandar will uh, nod politely to Flynn and say, well, perhaps we'll meet again. I make a gesture of the book as if, like, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fl Flynn is... I don't know, what's Flynn's charisma? I feel like he's already accomplishing being the uh, the suave face of the group uh, whilst the Major is the... <laughs> the Major's in charge and, uh, and maybe that's a liability, but uh, Flynn might be the one you actually send to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, I figure the Major seems like the sort of person who's, like, tactically in charge yeah. of the group. I mean, um, I, he believes himself yes, to be in charge. Thing. I think this just has happened. Yeah. <laughs> there was an argument, <laughs> to be fair, I think it, uh, Sparks was say, started following the Major's orders and Gil was saying, but he's not in charge. And Sparks was like, but he's acting like he's in charge. was a more or less no, I, verbatim. I, I, I remember, well, I, 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 I don't know if it was like that, because I remember Andrew saying that he's not used to me playing like characters that are so submissive to like others' <laughs> authority. <laughs> mm. I, you know, major. like Gil, Gil, Gil's a little bit military as well, so he'd yeah. be used to he's like, yeah, he's a major, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, he's, okay. yeah, he's, he's got a rank, I'm just an auxiliary. I get exactly. scared when people don't argue against my plans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, could we have uh, the first role of the on-screen campaign, uh, if you're travelling north, could you um, make an encounter check, please? 1d6. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll roll this one. Yeah. Uh, D six. Mm. Oh dear. What is it? Yay! I'm, well, that's I'm that's a one. Well, I, I, rolled yeah, it the, I was looking for. It's just been I rolled it in the roll twenty. Yeah, 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 no, it's in roll twenty. That's yeah, that's where it should be. Yeah. Okay, good start. That's a good start. Very really impressed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Started a fist fight in the street. Well, yeah. could you roll a? Could you roll a D eight? <laughs> D8. I think um, I'd really rather not. A six. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you uh, are you're, you're kind of half, you're you're halfway there. You're trapped along the side of the elven forest. Uh, none of your elves. It's not necessarily as relevant to you, but this is this is like there is a tendency towards uh, not ghettoization so much as um, there are cultural centres for different ancestries on the rock. People live in all kinds of places. Some ancestries live more concentratedly in places than others. Uh, but uh, like get the GIF heavily live in GIF town uh, because they can get specialised buildings kind of prepared and altered. Uh, you've got a dwarven area, you've got, uh, which is in the middle town up, up in the north centre. Um, you've got the burrows for the halflings, things like that. Uh, and the Elven Forest is a very beautiful go uh, forest of golden leafed trees which is the largest forest on the rock you can see up near the docks there's actually a, uh, a small forest as well but these golden leaved trees which are ever in in leaf um, uh, which is quite private you can basically visit there uh, for specific appointments but is otherwise pretty closed off not terribly welcoming to random wanderers uh, you're walking up the side of it uh, along there up towards the streets north of it uh, when uh, you realise that the turning you're going to take is uh, blocked. In, in, in fact, you see um, a number of large figures, about as large as the Major, stomping down it, and then uh, behind them uh, coming a number of carts uh, being pulled by more... Okay. Uh, so, yes, you've seen this uh, convoy of large carts being pulled by large humanoids, who, a couple of you, Gil and Flynn, you probably recognise... Uh, as ogres, kind of large humanoids often used as, or often hired as mercenaries, uh, or uh, as sometimes wild tribes you hear about on, on other um, planets and in other crystal spheres. Uh, but they are pulling large carts, which you do see in the carts there are uh, humans, you think, beautifully robed humans, and uh, large containers behind these humans. Container is this like a parade or something? Um, no, they look like crates. They're not kind of uh, decorated or anything. They look like large crates. Each of these carts has several large mm. crates in. Do they seem to be coming from the direction of like the upper city? 
Um, no, they seem to be coming kind of uh, across from kind of from a northerly direction down towards the southwest. So imagine I've oh, just moved your thing. Say you're you know you're there or something. You're trying to come through to here to the uh, this block above the forest. Right. And it's as if okay. they're traveling down um, almost a cross cross angle from you. Oh, like oh. down down oh. down this 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 main street here. Something like that, yeah. Well, uh, slightly right. further east, yeah, but yeah. Oh, the um, main street that street. that that one then. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um. So what's the, what's that area to the north then? Because that also seems looks fairly fancy. Oh, that's the Is that part of the, the upper that's city? The, that's or? the temple district. Uh, the ah. the priest, you know, Stipe. Um, he uh, he actually often goes up there for worship. Um, and I, it may be that if any of you are worshippers, you'll be familiar with uh, the temples there. Uh, so the other people on the street aren't like running and screaming. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but yeah, your your way is at least temporarily blocked, uh, unless, unless you want to push through. I mean, I suspect these might be being priests and priestesses being escorted by the ogres, which um. It was not the kind of thing you want to interrupt. Yeah, could we could we just if it seems like we'll be blocked for a while, maybe we can just like backtrack and move down a side street as quickly as possible and try and like cross in front of them, like get ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you turn you turn back and We got to beat the train. Does someone else want to roll a D6 encounter check then as you're taking extra time to travel. <clears throat> uh Sure? Yeah. Uh, yeah. one second. Did I press the button like? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Do you want to roll a, a, a D8? Not really. It's the most uh, eventful delivery ever. What did you roll? Not for this group. Yeah. I rolled an 8. Uh, could you roll oh. a, 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 a D, another D6 then? Keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm mildly <laughs> horrified. Oh, yep, this no. one was cursed. It's, it's another one. Okay, that, I mean, you didn't max out that time. Uh, <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, you, uh, uh, as you run down, you kind of turn around another alley that, uh, um, yeah, pro probably Flynn has picked up in his uh, sneaking around the city trying to work out different routes around. Uh, he'll lead you down another alley thinking you're going to head. Um, and uh, you uh, see, you see ahead of you there are what look to be two parties of of dwarves, uh, short humanoids, well armoured, long um, hair and beards. Uh, the works uh, they live up in the north of the middle city, uh, just to the northwest of the temples. Uh, and um, there, there's some sort of you, you don't recognise unless any of you can speak dwarvish. You don't recognise the language, but there seems to be some sort of heated. But low, quite kind of quiet argument ongoing between these two groups of five or six dwarves uh, who are across this alley in front of you. Well, the good news is that they are very small and I am very not, so I'm just going to keep walking <laughs> <laughs> right through the middle. Okay. Yeah, if we all get behind the major, we can like go in his wake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, sure. Let's make a reaction check for uh, for them. Um, does the major have a reaction modifier? Uh, possibly. Allow me to quickly just bring that up. Uh, yeah, reaction yeah, modifier. Yeah. Something for marine, isn't it? There might be. Uh, I don't have a base one, but there might be one for marine. Allow me to quickly check. Uh, I will also check for you whilst we're, whilst we're going. Let's, let's see who can get it the fastest. Warrior kid. Or if we'll crash the stream by checking. <laughs> we'll check and we try so hard that the stream can't crash. No, can't see Re reaction checks under Marine. Oh wait, Marine, Marine isn't in the fighter's handbook, no, is it? Whoops. It's a spell uh, jammer handbook one. Yeah, so, I opened the wrong PDF. Oh well. Maybe thinking of something else, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I saw Myrmidon, which is similar. Yeah, ah. Uh, so yes, you... <laughs> Uh, the uh, major kind of walks up to them. Uh, they turn round and uh, coolly, not hyper aggressively. They don't reach their axes, but 
all uh, 11 of them turn round more or less as one toward the major and uh, one of them says oh, you're looking to get through here are you do you see there's a conversation ongoing yes in the way in the middle of the street in fact uh, he'll... so Flynn were you stepping in there uh, as the major is confronted I was... the dwarves so the major is kind of bumped into these dwarves, and you you said you stepped forward. Yeah, I was trying to defuse the situation, yeah, what and you, maybe what, what um. What would you say? What's your play? If I could distract the dwarves long enough, so that, well, I, noticing that they have were having some sort of heated discussion, I sort of offered to say like, oh, if you're having an argument, maybe I can help you settle a disagreement between yeah. we'll between how you. They react, react to you. And what's your reaction modifier? Plus two. Plus two, very good. Yeah, they <laughs> they look at you and uh, uh, yeah. oh. what, do they, <laughs> what do they say? What do they say? So, um, yeah, let's check our our reaction table. Uh, you're at plus two, which uh, will, will they, yeah uh, will help. They say we'll settle with our axes, and they yeah. they and murder my, me. My bow and my axe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, so uh, in, there's an irony here. This is not the same as basic. So <laughs> low is good, not bad uh, on 2d10. Uh, so you're oh. normally at minus two. Uh, they look at you and uh, one of them will say, ah, Are you the son of the unnamed, ma the unnamed manly? <laughs> and then he'll kind of clap. We'll, he'll clap we'll, have to, we'll have to name my father at some point. Yeah. <laughs> His name just um, has to be unnamed. Uh, 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 he'll say to his, his yeah. uh, kind of his cohort, a dwarf who looks a lot like him, will say, they call him the unnamed manly because uh, anyone who takes his name in vain, uh, bad things happen to him. Let's say his name is Winston. That's a good name for a uh, for manly. And the other guy will say, uh, uh, yeah, yes, called, yes, uh, that uh, is my... Unnamed Nobrodic. And then the guy, the first one says, I doubt it. <laughs> and, uh, they look back and say, oh, "Well, we didn't know it was a, 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 a fellow of your own coming through." Please, sorry, sorry, please. And uh, uh, he, the, to the other group of dwarves who are kind of further down the alley, um, he'll uh, kind of say, "So yeah, you sprint across this this alley, don't you? You kind of roll, duck and roll." I'm imagining the major kind of diving and the ground thumping slightly as he uh, kind of jumps uh, to get out of the way of the oncoming ogres. Uh, and yeah, you're you're not far from Cavan Luskio's house or flat or whatever. This one, he he lives in an apartment, an upper floor apartment, in a tall four story. These are sort of think of them as like half timbered Tudor buildings, um, in many in many cases. Uh, and there's a walk up to his his apartment, uh, so you can walk up those stairs. Uh, the the major may need to step carefully or go on his own <laughs> to uh, spread the weight, let's say. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I knock gently on the door with enough <laughs> force to shake the ceiling. Yeah, you knock gently, the, the half-timbered building wobbles slightly. You see space implode. <laughs> um, and you are, uh, a few moments later, you're, you're, the door is opened and a slightly wild-eyed half-elf looks out, uh, wearing uh, leather armour and with a sword strapped to his waist and says... Uh, who are you? What do you want? And he'll well, we're here to deliver a message, dear boy. Uh, uh, he'll say... Are you Mr. Luskio? Uh, he'll look at you and say, uh, Who wants to know? Uh, and he'll close the door slightly, so just his eyes are peeking out of the door. The couriers would like to know. We have uh, a letter from man trying to spit acid oh. in your face. Uh, well, well, Sparks, uh, give him... Give him his letter. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I will um, <clears throat> open the compartment, reach in, and hand across the sealed letter. Yeah, uh, he will uh, sniff it and rub his yeah. finger across it, and then tear the paper open. And he, he'll kind of look and say, "That's you know, look at the seal." He says, "Okay, it is from Fandar. You've proven that much." And then he'll uh, he'll he'll offer you the piece of paper or stamp it with his ink stamp um, and then give you the envelope back and he'll read the paper and you start to hear him muttering 
come back when you've got something less stupid. Oh, I can't believe this. He doesn't know the things I've seen, the places I've been, the, the horrors and the wonders. And he'll kind of, yeah, he'll just start pacing around uh, in this kind of almost self-conscious manner, kind of looking around, casting his head from side to side. Um, he'll say, you tell Fandar that he can he can have my manuscript when, uh, when, when he's willing to accept the truth. If he can't accept the truth, he's not worth publishing my books. Did... Fair enough. Hey, uh... Ten gold pieces to bring you a rejection letter. Uh, he'll say. Apparently. He'll, he'll say. He 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 paid you. What for? Why did he? Pay ten you? ten gold you pieces. Ten gold pieces. That's that's far too much to deliver a letter. And he'll put his hand on his sword. Well, oh. yes. That's not what he said, but honestly, in, yeah, in just as confused. We really are. Uh, what? What? What's your manuscript about? Uh, he'll say... Clearly you're... The, the, he, he'll kind of put his head forward, kind of conspiratory, and say, the latest, the latest of one of my experiences, and I can't tell you too much, I want to give away, I think, but... We're of in course. The, we're in the Flogiston, and there was a gate in the middle of the Flogiston. The Flogiston is the, um, the, the kind of magical gas, basically, between solar systems. Between the crystal spheres, which contain solar systems, there's the vast Flogiston. Um, and this... Uh, uh, yeah, this you have to travel through. The flogger is different to space inside a crystal sphere. Um, and he'll say, I saw a gate there. A gate with a door. Most gates have doors. That's how one defines a gate. In the flogiston. Yeah, in the just standing on its own. Did Did you go through it? Uh, he'll say, I got the ship, we got the ship over and I, I opened it and I looked through. What did you say? Uh, he'll say, or under his breath, it was full of stars. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, Mr. Lusty, oh, you... uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It's... And you saw stars. It was full of stars. Perhaps you have to enlighten us a little bit. I'm, I fail to see how you finding a mysterious gate out there translates to you being nervous about no danger. You seem to be very concerned about your own personal safety. Um, he, he, he'll say the things I've seen, the, the, the enemies I've made. I, I used to be young and innocent and, and without care, but when you've travelled the stars as long as I have, uh, you, you get a bit protective of yourself. You'll understand when you're older. Uh, how long have you been travelling the stars? He'll, he'll, while backing away from uh, Sparks, he'll say, 30 years, who's asking? <laughs> me? Did you say, not just hear me? Say, uh, yes. I well, he was going to say, like, 300 or something. <laughs> uh, no, he's, he's a half-elf. Let's, he's not, he's not let's just say, as a hypothetical. Oh. Right, right. Let's just say, as a hypothetical that someone were to come hurt you. Who were you expecting us to be? We're just carrying a letter. Um, he'll uh, kind of look back at, kind of out the door, he'll look behind him to make sure there's no one behind him, and uh, he'll again lean forward conspiratorially and whisper, the stars were speaking, the stars were speaking. Uh, I see. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, dear boy, but uh, do you need us to find you a healer, maybe? Uh, Send one of the temple priests around to just give your brain a little bit of a pep up. He'll look at you and say, I'm perfectly sane. I haven't been headbussed by a gift lately, if that's what you're asking. I really wa wasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll, he'll say, he'll say... Um, but he'll, he'll say to, uh, to, you know, Flynn, who's interested, he'll say, look, if you want, it, it, may, may, maybe you could, uh, uh, you could read what I've written and, um, and then perhaps, uh, you could convince Fandar to publish it. If you're so close to him. And then he'll say, why are you so close to him? You know, again, in a slightly angry voice. I haven't met him before today. Uh, he'll say, even he kind of shakes his head clear and then picks up 
uh, a wad of paper and, and you can see it's, it looks like mimeographed or something else and it's a carbon copy of some kind um, of, of handwriting and he'll hand it to you and say, uh, and it's, it's sort of the length of I guess an essay or an art, a long form article in a magazine, it's not a whole book, um, but uh, he did say it's the latest <coughs> instalment so, uh, and he'll give it to you Flynn and say, you read it, you tell me if I sound mad and he'll stare at the gif angrily. I'll sort of hold it up and say, "I I will read it. I've I've enjoyed your previous work. Um, I'm very uh, I'm very interested." Uh, he'll bow his head uh, in acknowledgement, the first friendly sign all day, and then uh, say, uh, "He says, well, if you've if you've done your job, you can leave." And he'll gesture to the receipt in Sparks's hand. Um, and well, this has been a very uncomfortable yeah. meeting. Job's done. Yeah. I'll give you good day. <laughs> and I'll put the receipt into the same yeah. um, internal space that the letter was held and yeah. seal my box. <laughs> there is a slightly discomforting bloop as that happens, uh, as if seals are being popped or something and, and uh, <laughs> air is being vacuumed. Oh. Out. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, where to next? We should, we'll finish it in a moment, but yeah, where to next? Well, first of all, definitely he was quite mad. Um, but second yeah. of all, he's not exactly wrong that it's a little suspicious we got paid so much to deliver something to him. No. So. I'm very surprised it was just a rejection letter rather than, you know, poison or a threatening note of some kind. I mean, maybe it's slow-acting poison. Mm. I mean, there's a, there's a saying where I've come from of don't look at space gif in the mouth so we got paid in advance right yeah yeah do we even need to bring this guy as receipt mm. what does the the stamp he's given us look like the stamp note what does that look like it's so well the note the note is just a nice envelope that you were given the stamp um has a um yeah like a, a, a sort of a, a dragon but with uh, stellar designs on its body or coming off it like almost like it looks like a picture of a dragon but uh, it's a stellar dragon uh, but with a CL uh, worked into the design you know so it's like the the sinuous shape of the dragon with a C and an L designed into it okay very fancy so it doesn't seem like a, a secret message or a cry for help not so um I mean, there's lots about him that seemed like a cry for help, but maybe not uh, this. I mean, the literal literal cry for help, not like a subtle one. <clears throat> well, perhaps we should go pick up those carts and make a bit more money today. And then tomorrow we'll read in the paper that uh, Luskio's been, I don't know, poisoned or something. <laughs> yeah. Or more likely than not, committed. Uh, Flynn is not Is, is there a, a sanatorium on Brawl? Yeah, there, 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 are, there, are, there are hospitals run by the priests. But yeah, Flynn is obviously very concerned for his fellow beings. He's that kind of generous-minded guy. Um, yeah. Well, I'm not... I, I'm kind of agreeing with the Major that probably he's just spent too much time out in the stars by himself, or... It, it, it is know. very... It is, mm. it is interesting what he's saying, though. This might just be my... My still young groundling mind, you know, unused to all the the wonders of of, of the wild space. Well, we'll see what's in this manuscript when we yeah, have time to yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, so yeah, you, you're you're planning to head to the lower city. Is that the... Yeah, go do the yeah. collector yeah. stuff, okay. gift job. Uh, Brian, do you want to roll a? Do you want to make your first encounter check of the <laughs> the campaign? D six. Sure. Here's our non one. Ha ha. Not a three. Is such a thing even possible? Uh, so, you are. Yep, yeah, you are not far from arriving. It's, yeah, that's taken your morning. It took a few hours of a morning. It was a quite a quick job for, for 10 gold, very efficient. Uh, you are approaching the. Mm. Um, the armourers, and uh, you see um, coming down the street towards you, very much looking at you. Uh, you see a priest Ptah, priest of Ptah, the Egyptian uh, pantheon god, a major god of the stars, um, 
walking towards you very purposively uh, and uh, kind of looking at something in his hand and looking up at you. And then when he arrives at you, um, he uh, will say to you, uh, good, good morrow. Um, and then he'll look at, he'll kind of look at the light in the sky and say, ah, perhaps good afternoon. I'm, hmm. uh, and then say, I bear a message from a noble lady uh, for uh, you and will give a letter to Flynn. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I turned to everyone else. It, this happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being... Is, is this salacious, or...? Well, oh, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Gil's like, man, this guy. <laughs> Look, it... don't take this the long way, old chap, but... Are you a spy for someone? <laughs> Certainly not. Only for myself. Uh, I guess I'll read the, the note. Uh, it seems a little weird that a, a priest is delivering messages, but... Yeah. Uh, there, mm? there is no perfume on, on, the, on the letter, uh, Flynn, much to your disappointment. Uh, you open it, <laughs> and um, there is uh, a, a seal of um, the Temple of Ptah, uh, like as an official seal, as if sealed by a... Um, a registra registrar there to guarantee the authenticity of the note and everything else. So a bit like franking, you know, imagine like franking for a letter. Uh, so you know it's from a person uh, and that it's, and any, any contents have been read by the Temple of Qatar, uh, so that there's nothing criminal in it. Uh, and the note invites... So the letter says, uh, Flynn, it's uh, got a, a stamp from the Temple of Qatar to demonstrate its authenticity, the fact that nothing criminal is contained, the fact that um, any undertaking in it has been um, kind of cross-referenced by the Temple of Ptah, a very trustworthy uh, body of people. And it says uh, to, uh, to, Flynn, uh, to Flynn Manley, it invites your company to an urgent meeting this evening at the Temple of Ptah at a given time. Um, it, in return for discretion, uh, there will be a small fee of uh, five gold for each person who arrives at the meeting and in return for accepting and completing a job requiring discretion and the utmost uh, speed promptitude there will be an additional fee of 50 gold per head um despite the the promising <laughs> contents i think my face falls in disappointment and i just go it's it's only a job prospect. Yeah, you, the rest of you know A well paying one? No, no smell of perfume, no flowers fall out from it. it exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's my disappointment. And I, I just like I just like offer the letter to, to the others so they can read it themselves. Yeah, the rest was, of was there um numbers in there or uh, yeah, there's numbers in hmm? there and the time for the meeting tonight. It'll be at like nine o'clock tonight. Yep. You should go. Uh, yeah. So well, you, you have to the, the attending fee yeah. is for each event. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Maybe we're, in we're all oh. going. It invited. We're all going? Yeah. 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 It said for each person who arrives. Yeah. They're charging us for to attend. No, no. Yeah, it's an invitation for everyone. You're paid to attend. Five gold for attending. Fifty gold for attending. Oh. oh. Oh, well, yeah, there's no reason. That makes what was that? Yes. You know, even <clears throat> even if we don't take the job, we could just turn up and get paid. Well, we should still, really, you know, we should really take the job. Yes, yes, yes. Well, what yeah, if it's an awful yeah. job, you know? Never give away your time for free. That's, 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 I always say that. That's one of my first lessons. Yeah. Spot? Have you got any thoughts? Like, really unimportant bit to your time. I will follow the major's lead, but the. The amount of money does seem tempting. There's more than enough time to deliver these goods before the season. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Depends how heavy they are. Yes, I, I do need time to, to freshen up. <laughs> I was going to say, you could you can spend the afternoon moving these hand carts, then go back to your rooms, uh, splash your face, and then leave, I guess. Put on your best cologne. <laughs> I think tonight I'll wear the extra ruffled shirt. Tonight I will wear WD-40. 
Uh, for any non-British viewers, I will uh, wear the same that is, that is dress piece. uniform I always wear. Yeah, uh, you've, the thing about the major is, for all you kind of might think, oh, he's a bit <coughs> thug, bit bit bulky. I um, he's always incredibly crisply dressed uh, in, in kind of excellent <laughs> yes. red uniforms. Like he always looks good. Probably that's where Flynn and the major bond. I imagine. Yes, uh, I imagine you. Do you have a, a dress uniform for the evening? This is it. <laughs> oh. No, he always wears an impeccable dress uniform that somehow... They don't give you more than <laughs> one regimental uniform. Yeah. Okay, then. You kind of just have to iron it while it's still on. <laughs> yeah, it's moulded to his body. It's less uniform and more a second skin. <laughs> uh, okay, so through many asteroids... It's like plates of, of like cotton. Yeah. <laughs> through many asteroid instances... Uh, through um, a bo both an in-game traffic jam and more or less the equivalent on my computer um, and uh, through Flynn seemingly charming and beguiling everyone who comes into contact with uh, we have managed to get to the end of the first session of Gutter Stars uh, in two weeks time we'll be back and we will I guess see if you can deliver some armour and go to a meeting with a mysterious lady who may or may not marry Flynn in the campaign's conclusion um, <laughs> see uh thank you for watching and we'll have to see if everyone's computer catches fire or not uh, uh yeah by that time i will have moved in with one of these other players and uh <laughs> been using their computer uh but yeah so that will be it for this week uh make sure to uh, encourage the players and thank them for their patience in the comments and we will see you next time say bye everyone bye everyone <laughs>